Good morning, metalheads of the internet, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Metal Meltdown. Today, we are reviewing every single studio album from long-running Swedish melodic death metal crew, Arch Enemy. This isn't really something I planned to the same extent that I usually plan these reviewing every album style videos. This was more spur of the moment. I spent a couple of days just blasting through the Arch Enemy discography in preparation for Deceivers, their 11th studio album, which comes out this fucking week, and I have the promo copy for, and I've heard, and minor spoiler alert, I've mostly enjoyed. And I thought, well, you know what? Let's take advantage of this opportunity. Let's do a reviewing every Arch Enemy album video. Fuck it. Why not? As per the norm with every other video of this style, I will be focusing specifically on Arch Enemy's studio albums. I'm not interested in EPs, demos, live albums, or compilations, nor am I interested in any albums released through solo projects or through side projects. I will also be talking about each album in order of release and assigning them a score out of five. And no, we will not be talking about Deceivers in this video. If you want to hear about Deceivers, you're just going to have to wait a couple of days. You're just going to have to exercise a little fucking patience. Sorry, folks. First up, we have the band's official debut album, Black Earth, released December 12th, 1996 via Wrong Again Records. This would be one of the band's only records with Johan Leva on lead vocals. And it's... Fine. It's fine. It's okay. Yeah, I actually don't have a ton to say about this record, or even a lot of these early Arch Enemy records. Um, I like the aggressive nature of this thing. I, I do like how raw and dirty and in your face it is. There's some really great fucking guitar harmonies and leads and, and solos from Christopher Amit and Michael Amit. Duh. But, like, I don't know, a lot of the material just isn't that memorable for me, and, and Johan's vocals are just really, really, really fucking bad. I mean, he's just, like, literally barking and shouting at me like a goddamn Rottweiler across a good chunk of this record. Like, just within that fucking first track, Bury Me an Angel, I, I can't help but just giggle and, and cackle a little bit. Like, he literally is just barking at me. Like, his vocals just do not work with me at all here. There are some punchy riffs and some great solos. And again, I do like the very aggressive, dirty production and feel, but like, damn, those those vocals are, are tough to get past. I'm gonna go with a 2.5 out of 5. If there were an instrumental version of this record, I would honestly feel more comfortable with a 3.5 out of 5, but yeah, those vocals. Yeesh. Um, yeah. Okay. Moving on. Next up, we have Stigmata, released May 5th, 1998 via Century Media Records. And this is better than Black Earth? Yeah. Not great, but better. There's a lot more, like, classic heavy metal influence in here, like the kind of melodicism I expect from, like, some 80s Halloween and, like, Iron Maiden and Judas Priest combined with those death metal influences you're getting closer to like that signature arch enemy melodic death metal sound that we all know and we all have have feelings for definitely feels like michael and christopher Emmett as guitarists and songwriters are paying a lot of attention to what else is happening in swedish death metal and in melodic death metal at the moment it also kind of feels like michael is kind of looking back at records he did with carcass namely heartwork for inspiration the overall sound mix and production is a little bit cleaner, a little bit more transparent, but despite that, I don't feel as if Arch Enemy have compromised the dirt or the edge or the grit of, of Black Earth, and, you know, all of this works together to create a genuinely pretty thunderous and dynamic collection of, like, melodic death metal jams. And then Johan opens his mouth, and yeah... Yeah. I will say this, he sounds a lot better on here than he does on Black Earth, but even so, I, I still don't feel as if his vocals, his incessant barking and, and shouting is really fitting the music here. Like, it, it's just not 
matching up for me at all. And this isn't because, you know, I'm more familiar with the Angela or the Lissa material. I just don't think his vocals work here all that well. He sounds like he should be off playing with like a grindcore band or a crossover thrash band. Not Arch Enemy. Still though, the stuff I liked, I liked it enough to give this a very enthusiastic 3 out of 5, leaning towards a 3.5 out of 5. Once again, if there were a purely instrumental version of this record, I would be way more, like, pumped about it, but there isn't, so... C'est la vie. Next up, we have Burning Bridges, released May 21st, 1999, once again via Century Media Records. This would end up being Arch Enemy's final album with Johan Leva on lead vocals. And on some level, good, but credit where it's due, Johan does actually give a really strong performance on this record. It's almost as if he knew deep down this would be his final album with the band, because he actually does kind of bring it on here. There's actually a decent amount of variety to his vocals as well, like you get those crushing death metal gutturals, you get some more barked and shouted vocals, and you also get some blackened screeches and, and, and screams. Like, there's a decent amount of, like, variety to his vocals, legitimately, and it, it, it works really well with, like, the really catchy, thunderous, heavy metal, melodic death metal twin guitars, and, like, the really great kind of classic mellow death songwriting. In general, it really does feel as if Arch Enemy have learned a lot from the mistakes and the successes of Black Earth and Stigmata, because this feels like a, a, a culmination of everything that made those records what they are. It's tight, it's flashy, it's fun, it's aggressive, but like really clean and really accessible. Legitimately a really, really good album. Of this era of Arch Enemy, it's easily their best record. I'm actually gonna go with a 4 to 5 on this one. There's a lot of great material on here, a lot of underrated material like Silverwing, The Immortal, the title track Burning Bridges. It's just overall like a really great Swedish melodic death metal record. Like, it's, it's honestly really hard to find a lot of issues with this fucking album. I, I genuinely think it's a great record, and if you haven't checked it out, I would recommend you do so. Next up, we have Wages of Sin, released March 18th, 2002, once again by Century Media Records. This is the band's first album with Angela Gossow on lead vocals, and wow, what a fucking hell of a difference she makes. I mean, she sounds fucking fantastic on here. There's a little bit less vocal variety on this record than there was on Burning Bridges, but the sheer power and magnitude of her voice is is more than enough to, to make up for, you know, that. Like, she sounds fucking fantastic. It definitely feels as if the rest of Arch Enemy is, like, really inspired by her presence as well, because everything is just punchier, it's, it's heavier, it's catchier, it's louder and bigger, and the production is better, there's more money being put into the record, it just overall feels better. So much so that it almost feels like a, a, a brand new band, which I guess to some extent you could say is actually the case, because it's not like a ton of people pay a lot of attention to the Johan Leva era of Arch Enemy, which, you know, is a shame because as we've discussed, Burning Bridges is a great record, and there are some bright spots on Black Earth and Stigmata as well, but like, man, I don't, I don't blame anyone for ignoring those records, because Wages of Sin is fucking good, and you know, minor spoiler alert, the next few records to come out after this are really fucking good, too. Like, years later, tracks like Enemy Within, Burning Angel, Heart of Darkness, they all fucking slap, man. Tons of tasty, delicious, juicy fucking riffs, and, and killer twin guitar leads and solos. I just, I really love this record. I think it's just a really well-made melodic death metal record. Very strong, four to five once again. Definitely check this out if you haven't already, but then again, if you're an Arch Enemy fan, then you probably have. But whatever, fuck it. Go check it out again. Why not? It's, it's a great fucking record. Next up, we have Anthems of Rebellion, released July 23rd, 2003, once again via Century Media Records, and we have arrived at what I feel is Arch Enemy's best album. I mean, this thing is just riffs and riffs and solos and, and big anthemic crushing hooks for fucking days. Everything that the previous two albums did so well, but it's even bigger, it's even louder, even brighter, even cleaner, better written, better performed, the most confident 
and the most enthusiastic and excited they've ever sounded. Simultaneously, the most brutal I think they've sounded too. Like, there's some really gnarly fucking riffs on here. Like, Silent Wars, We Will Rise, Dead Eyes See No Future, Despicable Heroes, just tons of great fucking songs. Back to fucking back, we're seeing a little bit more variety vocally from Angela as well. You got Andy Sneet producing the record, and I know his, you know, his, his resume is a little spotty as of late, but, like, he did a great job just, like, elevating this band and, and like, taking everything that made them so great and just taking it to the next fucking level, sonically speaking. I'm feeling a strong 4.5 out of 5 on this. I think it's their best record without fucking a shadow of a doubt. Their tightest, their loudest, their best fucking made. Their strongest, their most cohesive and consistent. No fat, no filler, no shit, no nothing. Next up, we have Doomsday Machine, released July 26th, 2005, via Century Media Records. And it's pretty good. Um, it's, it's definitely a step down, I would say, from Anthems of Rebellion. But all things considered, it's a, a fun, flashy display of melodic death metal, pyrotechnics, and brutal vocals, which I think is what most people would want from a band like this, so fuck it, there's no real reason to be, like, crazy upset. I think it's a little bit more aggressive and pummeling in the vein of, like, some earlier records like Stigmata and Burning Bridges, while obviously combining the melodicism and the production expected of Wages of Sin and Anthems for Rebellion. That's great, I'm just not really feeling these songs as much. Like, the songwriting is not quite as tight for me, and it definitely feels like these songs are really just more of an excuse to display some, like, really over-the-top guitar noodling. But, you know, fine, because it's Michael fucking Amit, and he's a great guitar player, and so is Christopher Amit, and, like, whatever, you know? Like, Nemesis, My Apocalypse, Hybrids of Steel, all really good fucking songs. Taking Back My Soul is alright. Skeleton Dance is a little fucking silly, but whatever. There's some solid guitar pyrotechnics in there. I'm feeling a 3.5 out of 5 on this one. Definitely not as urgent or as memorable as other records, but still a, a pretty satisfying collection of, of mellow death riffery and rage. Like, wh whatever, you know? Like, just put it on, have some fun. Whatever, it's, it's still pretty good, even if it's not on the same level as other records we've talked about. Next up, we have Rise of the Tyrant, released September 24th, 2007, once again via Century Media Records. And I think in, in some ways this is one of Arch Enemy's more important records. Like, the lyrics are a lot more personal for Angela Gossow. Like, I, I've read some interviews where she talks about, like, crying after having written these songs and after having them played back for her. She talks a lot about, like, independence and, and strength on this record. Um, it deals a lot with, like, rising up against, like, tyranny and oppression. From a production standpoint, this is a lot stronger, too. Like, you've got Frederick Nordstrom uh, handling everything behind the scenes, and the dude's a fucking a master of, like, melodic death metal. He's produced tons and tons of killer fucking records, and everything has, like, this great metallic sheen to it. Everything feels absolutely fucking gigantic. And, of course, the fact that Michael and Christopher Amet are still throwing out tons and tons of tasty fucking gnarly riffs and, and thunderous and, and over-the-top displays of guitar fucking nonsense. Obviously, you know, that's great, too. I am starting to get the vibe at this point that Argenemy is a bit of a one-trick pony. Like, I feel as if I've been listening to the same type of album over and over and over again from them, but with varying executions. But, like, I don't know. This still feels distinct enough, you know? Like, it's still strong enough. The songs are still hitting pretty fucking hard. I'm, I'm feeling a, a four to five on this bad boy. Ultimately, it feels like a cross between Anthem's Rebellion and Doomsday Machine. Got plenty of great songs like fucking Blood on Your Hands, uh, In the Shallow Grave, Revolution Begins, the title track Rise of the Tyrant. It's it's a it's a really good fucking record. It's a great record. Four out of five. Boom. There you go. Next up we have The Root of All Evil, released September 28th, 2009, once again via Century Media Records. And this is kind of interesting because what we have here is Arch Enemy with Angela Gossow on lead vocals with this revitalized lineup and this really like fresh clean modern mellow death sound kind of 
revisiting tracks from the first three studio albums and giving them a new coat of paint. Normally, I'm really against the idea of a band re-recording older material because the new versions of those old songs almost never have the same kind of, like, staying power, the same kind of hunger and heart that made those original songs what they were. Great examples are First Strike Still Deadly from Testament, uh, you know, Let There Be Blood from Exodus, Clay Man 2020 from In Flames, all inferior to their original records to the original versions but in this particular instance i'm i'm totally fine with arch enemy doing this because once again um a lot of the issues i had with those early songs stemmed from johan leva's vocals and the kind of like really raw primitive sound and now we have angela gossow on vocals and a much bigger brighter cleaner sound and as a result these songs are popping and brimming with a kind of life and energy that they just didn't really have before. Beast of Man is better, Diva Satanica is better, even songs I, I liked and appreciated before, like Silverwing, they're just way better here. Or at least I think they are, I don't know. I'm looking online and I'm seeing some pretty mixed reviews, like All Music gave this like three and a half out of five stars, Metal Hammer gave this eight out of 10 stars, Thrash Hits gave this like two and a half out of six stars. Why is there a six star scale? I don't fucking know. The point is, clearly there's not like a, a unanimous fucking decision on the, the quality of, of this record, but whatever, I, I personally really fucking enjoyed this. Like, if you ask me, older bands looking to re-record older material, I think should be paying attention to records like Roots of All Evil. I, I legitimately thought this was a really good fucking record. I'm feeling a very, very, very strong 4 to 5. I think it's fucking great. Shoot me. I, I enjoyed this. I have no idea if that's going to be a hot take or not, but fuck it. I, I really liked this thing. Next up, we have Chaos Legions, released May 20th, 2011, via Century Media Records. Some of you may remember, in a video I did with Jamie Horsley, aka Discovery Metal Legion, um, I said that I've changed my mind on this album a lot over the years, and that I used to really like this thing, and then at the time of that video that I thought it was just kind of like meh. I thought it was kind of like really corny and cheesy and wasn't really doing much for me anymore. That kind of still remains the case. Like this is definitely a very corny record from Arch Enemy. Like it definitely feels like they really kind of tried to capitalize on a lot of the lyrical themes of Rise of the Tyrant. But it, it just feels like really, 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 really silly and phoned in here. The record is also like so clean and so polished to the point of appearing somewhat overproduced and like everything is like designed to be as big and as anthemic as, as possible. And it's, it's kind of like transparently obvious and feels a little bit phony. But like, it's still Michael and Christopher Amet on guitar. It's still Daniel Erlanson on drums and Charlie D'Angelo on bass and Angela Gosso on vocals. It's still this awesome group of uber talented people. And they are milking this lackluster material for every fucking drop of fucking gold that it can muster. Like, yeah, it's corny, it's cheesy, it's, it's bloated. Tracks like Under Black Flags We March legitimately have me cringing a little bit as I'm given like these Vietnam style flashbacks of 13 year old Robert pumping his fist and screaming fuck you to everybody but like my god the performances are still really fucking good these guys are good enough at their fucking jobs that i'm simply not bothered by everything else not really at least i'm feeling a three out of five on this if any other band or if any other version of arch enemy recorded this instead of this particular lineup this probably would have been disregarded as like a super fucking corny, cheesy piece of fucking generic mellow deaf tripe. But because it's this lineup and because they're this good at what they do, I'm still able to get like a few solid fucking riffs and a few solid fucking hooks out of this. Maybe it is nostalgia. I'll concede there. I did legit listen to this as a teenager, like as I was beginning to discover death metal and something about this, I just like really appreciated at the time maybe it was that more like classic heavy metal sheen maybe it's because i was an edgy little fuck and i was just like yeah fuck everything and this just like resonated with me for that reason whatever the case i dug it at the time i'm kind of digging it now 
shoot me. I don't fucking care. I dig it. Whatever. Fuck me, I guess. Like, it's objectively not a great album, but, like, again, these guys are just so good at what they do that it. I'm, I'm still enjoying myself. I hope that makes sense. Otherwise, I look like a complete doofus right now. Next up, we have War Eternal, released June 6th, 2014, once again via Century Media Records, and it's okay. It's, it's, it's fine. Uh, there have been a lot of changes behind the scenes. Uh, Angela Gossow is no longer in the band, neither is Christopher Amitt, for that matter. They have been replaced, respectively, by uh, Alyssa White Glues and Nick Cordell. Alyssa, at the time, was best known for her work with the French-Canadian metalcore and melodic death metal band The Agonist. Nick was best known at the time for Arsis. These are both uber talented people in my opinion. I don't want to imply otherwise, but something about their presence on this record within Arch Enemy has kind of thrown the rest of Arch Enemy off their game a little bit. Like, the riffs just aren't as strong. The kind of energy and enthusiasm that I expect, even from something as corny and stupid as fuck like Chaos Legions, it just isn't really here. There are still like a few solid tracks. Like I think the title track is pretty solid as the pages burn. Uh, you know, the title track War Eternal. Most of the singles that were released come to think of it. They're probably the best songs on the record. But there's also a lot of filler and it's just not as flashy or as triumphant or as fun as other records in the band's discography. It feels kind of like an awkward transition album. Like Arch Enemy kind of have to rediscover who they are. And they haven't done that, and hence, War Eternal. I honestly feel comfortable saying this is their worst record. Like, as, as stupid as Chaos Legions was in so many parts, I could at least say I had fun. This, I don't know, I mean, aside from a few songs here and there, I, I don't remember much from this record at all. So, yeah, 2.5 out of 5, leaning towards a 2 out of 5. It's... I mean, it's harmless. It's a totally inoffensive mellow death record, but definitely not as strong as uh, what we've been, you know, dealing with up until this point. Like, it's, it's, it's just way fucking weaker. And finally, this brings us to Will to Power, released September 6th, 2017 via Century Media Records. Arch Enemy sounds so much more confident and so much more full of life and creativity and enthusiasm on this fucking thing. Alyssa is a lot more comfortable within Arch Enemy. She's experimenting with uh, different kinds of vocal deliveries, bringing in some clean vocals. She's writing ballads for the band, which is really interesting, and I, I really enjoy them. Like, Reason to Believe is actually a, a pretty good song. A little melodramatic, but like a well-written, well-produced fucking song. Nick Cordell is gone, but in his place we have fucking Jeff goddamn Loomis. So, like, holy shit. And he and Michael Amet are just bringing, like, thunderous, mellow deaf riffs and solos and leads for fucking days. It's honestly kind of cool to hear Jeff Loomis doing something a little less over-the-top prog metal bullshitty and and just kind of doing some like really classic heavy metal metal death shit him and michael together just have this like chemistry that absolutely brings to mind michael and christopher Amet, his his brother you know and you know the rest of the band is really fucking bringing it the beats are bigger the riffs are bigger the production is so fucking crisp like production wise this might honestly be one of my favorite arch enemy records it just sounds fucking awesome I feel like there's also a little bit more power metal influence in this, too. Like, it's just so flashy and, and so bright that it kind of feels like a power metal, mellow death hybrid. And I think that really works for this era of Arch Enemy right now. It makes for some really great stuff. The aforementioned Reason to Believe, The Eagle Flies Alone, The World is Yours. Like, there's some really solid material on this thing. I'm feeling a very enthusiastic 3.5 out of 5, leaning towards a 4 out of 5. I think it's still a little predictable, and I would like for something a little bit more colorful and dynamic, which, spoiler alert, I think I'm getting from Deceivers, this new album. But even so, I think it's a, a big improvement on War Eternal. Much more impactful, much more memorable, much more fun. And yeah, that's it. We're not going to talk about Deceivers. If you want to hear me talk about Deceivers, sorry, you're going to have to tune into that album review, although 
Once again, not so subtle spoiler alert, I think it's a really good fucking record, so if you want to hear more about it, to stay the fuck tuned in. Let me know what your favorite Arch Enemy record is, let me know what your least favorite Arch Enemy record is, let me know if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, if, I'm, if you think I'm full of fucking shit, I'm game, throw it at me. Press this button right here to subscribe so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown E fucking immediately, especially updates in regards to that aforementioned Deceivers review. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.